In our first lesson for grade 12 Euclidean geometry, we are going to have a look at the proportionality theorem. In grade 11, we did all the theorems on circles, and in grade 12, we focus on triangles. Before we can start with the theorem, there are two definitions that I'm going to remind you of. The first one is a ratio. A ratio can be written as A to B or as A over B. And then it's important to remember that a ratio is not an actual distance. If we have a look at this line with a 10 and a 20 centimeter part, we can write down the ratio as 10 to 20, but that can be simplified to a half. And that half is not an actual distance, but the 1 and the 2 simply indicates the ratio of the distance. Our next definition is proportionality. And proportionality is where I have two ratios that I put equal to each other. So the ratio A over B might be equal to the ratio C over D. And with a proportionality, there are a few algebra manipulations that you are allowed to use. The first one is you are allowed to do cross multiplication or part of cross multiplication. So you can say I'm going to multiply the D that is divided on the right to the left and that will equal C. Or I can do my cross multiplication in both directions to end with A times D equals to C times B or B times C. Then I can also swap around both sides of the proportionality. So I can change it to B over A is the same as D over C. And then lastly, I can also combine the numerator and the denominator. So I can say the ratio of A to C will be the same as the ratio of B to D. If we think about an example, if we take 2 over 3 and say that we know that's equal to 4 over 6, we are allowed to do part of a cross multiplication and multiply by 6 on the left because now I have 12 divided by 3, which is 4. Or I can do the cross multiplication on both sides and then both sides will be equal to 12. I can also swap around both sides because 3 over 2 is still the same as 6 over 4. And lastly, I can compare the numerators 2 to 4 with the denominators 3 to 6 and they are both a half. Let's now have a look at the proportionality theorem. Theorem 1, the proportionality theorem. A line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally or in the same ratio. In our sketch, PQ is the line that is drawn and it is drawn parallel to one of the sides of my triangle, side BC. This theorem says that if this is true, then the other two sides are divided into the same ratio, which means that the ratio of AP and PB will be the same ratio as AQ and QC. So with every theorem, there's an if and a then part. So in this case, we can say that if we know that PQ is parallel to BC, then we can accept that AP over PB, the ratio on the left, is the same as AQ over QC, the ratio on the right. And this ratio is just one of a few options. We can now, of course, swap those around and say PB over AP. Or we can even have a look at the full side on the left, AB, with one of the two smaller parts, for example, AP. And that will be the same ratio as AC over AQ. So by using this theorem, there are quite a few proportionalities that we can write down. And when you use this theorem to write down one of these proportions, your reason will be line parallel to one side of a triangle. 
Let's have a look at our first example. In the sketch, AB to BC is in a ratio 7-3. AB has a length of 21 units and AE 20 units. They ask us to determine the length of BC. So when we start with our first part of information, this is a ratio. So the ratio of AB to BC is 7-3. But to remind myself that this is not an actual length, I'm going to add a variable to indicate that this is just a ratio. We are asked to calculate the actual length of BC or CB. And for this, I'm simply going to use my ratio that I was given. Instead of writing AB to BC, I'm going to start with BC that I want to calculate at the top and AB. Which, which means my ratio will now swap around to 3 over 7. Then I can substitute in what I know. I know the actual distance for AB is 21. And that should be simplified to a ratio of 3 over 7. Which means that BC will be 3 over 7 times 21. And BC will then be 9 units always helps to go and add what you calculated in the picture because you might have to use it later on. Question B. Determine the value of the ratio AG over GD. So they want us to calculate the ratio and if you look closely we can work in triangle ACD because in this triangle we already have a line that is drawn parallel to one of the sides of the triangle so we can accept that the ratio on the left, AB to BC, will be the same as the ratio on the right, AG to GD. I'm going to start by saying that I'm now working in triangle ACD simply because there are so many options of triangles. And in this triangle we know that BG is parallel to CD and therefore we can say that the ratio asked AG over GD will be the same as the ratio AB over BC. My reason for this, line parallel to one side of the triangle. And then we know that AG over GD will also have the ratio of 7 to 3. Question C, determine the length of FE. If you look for a triangle in which FE is now, you will see that we are going to have to work in triangle ADE. In this triangle, we once again already have a line that is parallel to one of the sides of the triangle. But when I want to write down my ratios now, I need to realize that I want FE, but the actual side length that I have is AE. So I'm going to have to focus on the full length AD and GD, which will be equal to AE and FE. On the left, I already know that AGGD is a ratio of 7 to 3. And once again, I'm going to add a variable to remind me that it's only a ratio. That means that the full ratio there will be 10Y. So when I start, I once again mention the triangle. We are now working in triangle ADE. And in this triangle, we know that GF is parallel to DE. And therefore, we can now write down our ratio. And I'm going to start with FE, the side that I want to calculate, over AE, the side length that I have. And that has to be equal to GD, the smaller part on the left, over AD. And my reason for this, line parallel to one side of the triangle. Now I can substitute in what I know, so I'll say Fe over 20 will be the same as 3 over 10, and that means that Fe will be 3 over 10 times 20, and Fe will then end up being 6 units. In our next example, we will have no constant values. Example 2. In the sketch, BD is parallel to CE, and we also get 
that if A is parallel to CD. The question here is to prove the ratio AB BC is the same as the ratio FC CE. When you need to prove something, you can always start with one of the sides of the equation and see how you can end up getting to the other one. So if I'm going to start focusing on ABBC, that will be in triangle ACE. And in this triangle, we have a line that is parallel to one of the sides of the triangle. So we can say that ABBC is in the same ratio as AD. D, e. So I'm going to say I'm starting in triangle ACE where I know that BD is parallel to CE and therefore the ratio AB BC will be the same as AD DE and my reason line parallel to one side of the triangle. If we now focus on ratio AD DE we would realize that it is also in the bigger triangle AFE. And in that triangle, once again, we have a line that is drawn parallel to one of the sides of the triangle. So in that triangle, I can start off saying that in triangle AFE, I know that if A is parallel to CD and therefore the ratio ADDE will be the same as the ratio FCCE. And once again, my reason line parallel to one side of the triangle. Let's now have a look at the two proportions that we have. In both proportions, we have the ratio AD over DE. And that means if ABBC is the same as that, and if CC is the same as that ratio, then ABBC should also be the same as FCCE. And that will be my conclusion. If ABBC is the same as ADDE, but ADDE is the same as FCCE, we can make the conclusion that a, B, B, C will also be the same as F, C, C, E. So without these two ratios being in the same triangle, they can also be equal. So from these two examples, we can see that sometimes you will have to calculate a side length. Sometimes you will have to calculate the actual values of a ratio. And sometimes it will be abstract where you have to prove that two ratios are the same.